welcome students as you start coming in. It's the American Heritage Virtual College Fair. You are in session C1. I think probably at this point, some of you have already been to the sessions previously. Just a reminder, you are on mute. Your cameras are off, so we cannot hear or see you. But you can ask questions on the little Q&A on the bottom. So feel free during the presentation, you can ask a question uh, for a specific college or a general question, and they can reply to you on the chat. Or we might um, answer question that answer answer that question for everyone at the end of the presentation. Um, the record it is being recorded, so this recording will be available after. Um, if you'd like to see it or you missed anything that anyone said, um, I'm, we're going to go ahead and start, and we welcome Brandeis University. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for, for joining uh, this little group session today. My name is Jessica Schulman. Um, I'm a senior assistant director of admission at Brandeis University. Um, is it possible for me to share my screen on top of Ms. Yeah, just, if you actually share, if you press share, you should be able to take over. Oh, it'll start. Yes, go ahead yeah. and share. It'll take over. Go ahead. Thank okay, you. perfect. Um, so just to give you a little bit of insight um, into Brandeis, this is going to be short and sweet, and then I'm happy to answer questions in the chat afterwards. But Brandeis University is just outside of Boston, uh, Massachusetts. We're about nine miles outside of Boston. So you have your own suburban kind of home base campus with really easy access into the city. It's about a 15 to 20 minute ride on the train um, or one of the free shuttles that we offer. I think two of the main things to remember um, about Brandeis, one is that we're a tier one research university. What that means is that a lot of our funding and resources go towards research, whether that is the hard sciences, the social sciences, the humanities, the fine arts, every major needs research, right? Um, and at Brandeis or across the country, there's about 120 tier one research universities. The average size of those schools being about 26,000 students. Brandeis is the second smallest research university in the country. We're only 3,600 undergraduates, plus about uh, 1,500 graduate students. So you have the funding and resources of a big institution at the size of slightly larger than a liberal arts college. So you'll find that our students are highly engaged in research in a number of different departments. There's over 30 different centers and research institutions on, institutes on campus where our students are highly engaged. I think another important thing to note about Brandeis is that there's a lot of themes of social justice and repairing the world on our campus. Um, a lot of students come to Brandeis because they want to advocate for something, change something, fix something in the world, whether that's advocating for LGBTQ rights or environmental sustainability or finding a cure for something or working with refugees, whatever your kind of platform is, you'll find uh, that Brandeis is a really great stepping stone and kind of cohesive environment for for really getting those initiatives off the ground and, and really running with them. Um, our students are very highly adamant about community service and giving back to either their respective communities or across greater Boston um, or even back in their home cities, countries, anything like that. Uh, looking at our student body, only 3,600 undergrads. So you see familiar faces on campus. We're about 20% international students um, and about a third of our student body identifies as underrepresented minorities. You're meeting people from all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of values and perspectives on the world to create this really kind of dynamic kind of community. Uh, over half of our students do double major. Maybe you like things that pair really nicely together. Maybe you like business and economics or neuroscience and psychology. You'll also find a lot of students at Brandeis who have interests on polar opposite ends of the academic spectrum. Uh, I had a student worker last year there um, double major was in chemistry and theater and you're like what but at Brandeis that's very normal very typical you meet a lot of students with those kind of wide-ranging interests um, across the board which I think is really fun uh, we are a test optional institution and we have been for a number of years at this point so there's nothing particularly new for us in in navigating the test optional process uh, and we also do meet full financial need uh, based on a review of your FAFSA and CSS profile. Um, we practice a holistic review uh, process when, when reviewing applications. Um, and I think the student body at Brandeis is just gonna be very open-minded, very down to earth, very authentic, a little quirky in like a positive way. I think quirky often gets a negative connotation, 
but um, our students are just very genuine, kind students, and I think that's that's where a lot of our campus community really connects with with the Brandeis, you know, environment, atmosphere, and experience. Um, so I'm going to keep mine short and sweet. Just remember that you know, right outside of Boston, really easy access into the city. Most students will graduate with two to three internships by the time they finish up at Brandeis, um, and then we are that small research institution, um, as well as a really wonderful platform for social justice. So I think I'm gonna actually end there, which is probably faster than I normally expect to go. Um, but with that, I will stop sharing my screen and I, I invite you guys to ask me questions in the chat. Thank you so much. We'll move on then to Sanford. You are muted, Dana. You'd think I'd learn by now. Um, I'm Dana Gerler. I'm from Stanford University Office of Admissions, and I'm all of your um, admission counselors. So um, I will actually go ahead and share my screen as well um, and show a little bit more of our Stanford. Let's see. Okay. Um, so we are Stanford University. We have been described as a national pillar for educating with strength and purpose since 1841. And so we do believe that we are a foundational college and foundational university throughout the nation. Um, we are number one in Alabama and we are number two nationally in student engagement. We're the number one most recommended um, university in the United States. We are the 87th oldest university as well um, with about 177 majors, minors, and concentrations. We have a lot of fast track programs, which I like to touch on whenever I'm talking about, you know, Stanford academics. And um, that goes with law, pharmacy, PT, healthcare admin, social work, accountancy. Um, we have a very strong business and nursing program. And so I think that we can cater to a lot of um, majors and interests for you students. It is a very communal and very um, relationally oriented community at Sanford. Everything we do, um, we have relationship in mind. And so there's always something going on from student activity events with traditions to um, even the athletics. We are an NCAA Division I school. We're in the SOCON tournament. Um, we have about 17 NCAA Division I sports and, 100 and, or, and 40 championships since we've entered the tournament. So game day is a huge deal at Sanford as long, uh, along with the different, um, you know, the different um, organizations. We have about 166 organizations and counting on Sanford's campus. So um, about 50% of our students are involved in Greek life, which we're really proud of. It's a very strong program at Sanford. So if you want to be involved in that, I definitely encourage it. It's an incredibly wholesome and Christ-centered community. Um, but if you're the other 50% that's not into it, um, you do have a lot of options. You'll never be bored at Sanford for sure. I like to describe Stanford as a little big school. And so for that, that kind of looks like, or for us, that kind of looks like um, 18 average class size, um, a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. With that comes a lot of hands-on experience, really deep relations with your professors that'll go, um, you know, be ven very, ven very beneficial from the day to day and to you know the day you graduate and beyond. So day to day, you're working with professors and research. You're looking at um, hands-on experiences in the classroom and outside during field work, different internships and networking, and then long term also having those letters of recommendation for grad schools, you know, and for different career sets that you have professors that know your character and they know who you are and you're not just a number. And so that's really important to Samford. Um, we do have about 5,700 students in our classes now. Um, this year was our 12th consecutive record-breaking freshman class with about 971 students. Um, about 70% of those students are from out of state from 46 states and 28 countries. Um, and we do have a strong study abroad program. I think our hallmark for that is our, um, our Davis house in um, Kensington, London. Um, we are so proud of that. You can spend a semester or just a few weeks there um, along with other options around the country as well. 
like I said before, we um, do have a lot of organizations, lots of concentrations and minors. I would love to talk to any one of you guys about any questions you guys have um, regarding those. But I think to top it all off, one thing that is extremely important when you're looking at a college is, okay, so I'm getting my degree, now what? What can I do with that? What is that gonna be benefit to me? How is that gonna be a benefit to me? 97% um, of our undergraduate alumni are either employed or furthering their education six months post-grad. That's very recent study done from our class of 2019. Um, and so we're really proud of that stat as well. About a middle 50% of our incoming students have an ACT of about a 23 to 29, an SAT of about 1130 to 1350, and a GPA of a 3.5 to 4.1. Um, we do have those five components of our application and we are test optional this year. So, you know, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions you guys have regarding that. Um, and you know, we do have a lot of options for financial aid. And so definitely fill out your FAFSA, definitely check out our scholarship website and definitely reach out to me anytime you guys need help with any of that. Um, if you get one thing from this conversation about Stanford University, just know that Stanford is full of relation, full of tradition, and we um, invite Christ into every single thing that we do. Um, and so that is all that I have for now, but um, that's Stanford University. Perfect. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to Stetson. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. So my name is Michaela, as you can see from the screen. I am one of the admissions recruiters here at Stetson, but I am also a Stetson grad. I graduated back in May of 2019, and I am actually a current student in the MBA program at Stetson as well. So I'm all about Stetson. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a presentation really quick to share with you guys a little bit more information and why Stetson is so special to me. Awesome. And one of the reasons why I am so proud to be not only a current Stetson employee, student, but a graduate is because Stetson is a fantastic university. So we actually, um, as you can see from the screen, have a ton of different accolades and awards that we have been given. But one of our most notable is we are actually ranked the fourth best regional university in the South, which is something that we are very proud of. And I think it's important too, when you're considering your college, one of the important factors is location, right? So we are located in Deland, Florida, which for those of you who haven't heard of Deland quite yet, it's about an hour away from Orlando and then about 30 minutes away from Daytona Beach. So a fantastic location if you're wanting to hop over to Orlando for the weekend to enjoy the attractions over there, or if you like going to the beach in the mornings before classes. But also Deland itself is a fantastic place to call home while you're going to college. In 2017, we were actually voted the best Main Street in the nation. Reason being is because there is always something going on, whether it's our farmer's market that happens every Friday night or one of the festivals or parades that they will actually shut the streets down in the town for. It is a great place to call home while you're going to college. And here at Stetson, we're going to have three core values that pretty much guide everything that we do on campus. First and foremost is going to be intellectual development. So you guys are heading off to college. The main goal is to learn, right? And Stetson has a great environment to do that. We actually have about a 3,150 undergraduate population on our campus, meaning that you are gonna have an average class size of about 20 students with a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. What this really means besides the stats is that you are really going to get your, to know your professor and they are really going to get to know you. You're going to walk into class, they're going to know your name, they're going to talk to you, ask how your weekend was. And what's really beneficial is that you're able to facilitate these really close relationships with faculty members, which is of course great inside of the classroom, having that personalized educational experience, that accessibility to faculty members, but also that extends beyond the classroom walls. So when you guys get towards graduation or even throughout your college years, these professors are going to know you. So they're going to say, hey, we heard of this internship. I think you would be perfect for it. Or hey, can I please write your letter of recommendation for you? And they're going to be able to write you a really genuine one that makes you stand out because they know you not only in an academic sense but also in a personal sense too. And also something important when we're talking about faculty members is that 95% of them hold the highest degree in their area of study. And why that's so beneficial at a university like Stetson is because your faculty members are always the ones teaching you. We never have graduate assistants or teaching assistants instructing the classes. 
Also talking about intellectual development and academics, we have over 105 different areas of study for our students. We have our College of Arts and Sciences, our School of Business, a pre-law program, as well as our School of Music. And the great thing at Stetson is that we're also a liberal arts university and you are able to mix and match your majors. So you can cross pollinate, you can do music with an outside field in psychology, you can study business and science and really making yourself even more marketable going into the workforce. We also have great pre-professional tracks if you know where you might want to go to graduate school after leaving Stetson. So we have a pre-health program for students interested in medicine. We have pre-vet, pre-dentistry, pre-engineering. So all of those pre-professional tracks that you guys can add on. And our second core value is going to be personal growth. So here at Stetson, we believe that your experience in college also extends beyond the classroom. That was one of my favorite parts of being a Stetson student was I felt like I was really able to also grow as a person during my time there. And a lot of ways for you to get involved and do that. So we have over 120 different student clubs and organizations. We have everything from a skydiving club to a hammocking club, depending on your level of venture. Um, but we also have Division one sports. So if you're interested in trying out for those, or if you're like me and you like going on and cheering on your fellow teammates, that's there for you. We have club sports, we have intramural sports, and we also have Greek life. The average Stetson student is involved in three clubs and organizations outside of academics. And that's something that I felt was, was so special about being a student at Stetson was because it was more than just getting my degree. It was also being a part of a community and being a part of something. And Stetson students are warm, involved, genuine, and just being a part of a community like that and having that also support system going to college was amazing. And then moving on to our last core value is going to be global citizenship. So if you're interested in studying abroad, that's also something that you can do here at Stetson. We have programs that are as short as two weeks long. We have programs that are six weeks long, a semester, a year. So really whatever you're looking for. Also, our staff members are willing to meet with you one on one to help find the program that fits best for you. And something overall that's really important at Stetson is that you get to be involved. So senior research, internships, public performance, getting that hands on experience is something that you are guaranteed to get at Stetson. Now, moving forward to quickly talk about the application process. So for those of you that are seniors, I'm sure you're working on your applications now. You can apply either through our Stetson application or we're on Common App. We also are a test optional university. We have been for a while, so you have the opportunity to decide whether you would like your scores to be considered or not. And we review every application on a holistic basis here at Stetson. Also, after applying, you are automatically considered for a merit-based scholarship that can be up to $30,000. And you also are able to apply for need-based aid as well through the FAFSA and the CSS profile. And lastly, before we wrap up, I would also just like to mention that we are open for in-person campus tours. So if you all are interested in coming and seeing our beautiful campus, we would love to have you. Also, if you prefer to tune in online, that is also great. We have virtual open houses, um, virtual campus tours, virtual student ambassador meetings. So a lot of activities for you to get involved in person or on campus. But thank you guys so much. And I would love to answer any questions that you have one-on-one -on -one and give you some more information. Thank you, Michaela. That's perfect. And then we'll move on to Tufts, please. All righty. Okay. I'm going to try to share my screen here. It's on the bottom, the share screen. Yeah. Uh, can you see that? I'm not sure. No. No. All right. I've had issues with my computer before, so I'll just chat. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. My name is Danny Paredes, and I am the Director of Strategic Planning at Tufts University. For those of you who are not familiar with Tufts University, we're located just outside of Boston, roughly about five miles away from downtown Boston, or six train or metro stops away from the city itself. Uh, when you think about Tufts University, we are a place that is a research university, but one of the smallest of the research universities. We have a unique constellation of schools. We have our own medical school, dental school, veterinary school, school nutrition policy, school of biomedical research, the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, which is the premier school of international relations and the first one founded of its kind, and then the graduate schools of arts and sciences, engineering, and the School Museum of Fine Arts. At the undergraduate level, we have three schools, the School of Engineering, School of Arts and Sciences, and the School Museum of Fine Arts. 
What does this mean for your potential undergraduates? The ability for you to explore your interests and your majors with great depth and detail, or as broadly as you like. We are looking for active learners, people who want to engage education at a much different level than they've done at the secondary school career. Not just to sit in a classroom setting, listen to a lecture and say, I learned something, but to actually take that knowledge and apply that knowledge to something that's meaningful to you, something that's gonna enhance you as a person, the respect of communities you're maybe coming from, or just society in general. And that is one of the tenets of Tufts University. We want to make the world a better place. We want to give you the skills necessary for you to make some type of meaningful change. We want you to become engaged in your own educational uh, and journey in some respective way. And so what you're going to see here is students who are going to really take a very, very approach to education. The cornerstone of what we teach here at Tufts University is the interdisciplinary approach. We don't believe today's, uh, today's problems are, and challenges are siloed in any way. They are multifaceted, very complex. And what we're looking for is students who want to merge things together that not, might not normally merge things together. Things that are, might not necessarily go together and try to get a multifaceted perspective. Engineers who might love English, artists who want to be computer scientists, social scientists and humanities folks who might want to seek a STEM particular area. That is a distinctive aspect for this particular place. We're trying to make you multifaceted individuals because we're trying to prepare for a world that's ever changing, a world that's become much more dynamic. With all the social media outlets you have available to you and how rapidly technology is changing uh, the world today, we want you to be intellectually nimble and flexible. We want you to have the skill sets necessary to be, to, to be able to solve the problems of today, to anticipate the problems of tomorrow, and to be able to solve those problems in some particular way. This is a place that wants you to have an experiential learning experience. We want you to put into practice what you've learned in some respective way, whether it be through research, where 50% of the undergraduate population does research, where it be through internship opportunities, where roughly about 75 to 80% of the undergraduate population participates in internships, or whether it be through some other form of expression uh, that you choose, a study abroad experience, for example, participating in one of the 300 clubs or organizations that we have on a particular campus. We want you to become engaged in some respective way. What you're going to see here is a distribution requirement that will help you to go across different disciplines, to test your ideas across different, different disciplines, for you to actually have the opportunity to push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit, to try something a little bit different, uh, but also dive into your passions, whatever those passions may be. And so what you're gonna see here are students who are willing to engage with one another, who are willing to share a little bit of themselves. We value diversity in every facet you could possibly imagine, not just diversity of rest, uh, racial and ethnic persuasions, but diversity of thoughts, opinion, background, perspectives, point of view, geography, as well as religion. We want you to share a little bit of yourselves because we want you to learn from one another. We believe learning doesn't only occur in a classroom setting, but in a social setting as well, over lunch, over dinner, with a roommate who could be from halfway across the world from a place you're not familiar with. And that's what the distinctive aspect of this particular place. Roughly about 20% of, of our population, undergraduate population is international in nature, or our US citizens who have lived abroad the entire lives. So you're gonna have a very wide view of the world. We want you to be socially aware of the world around you. We want you to be prepared for what that's ever changing. We want you to be aware that things, the careers, the interests they may have now might quickly change in the three or four years that you're in college. And we want you to give you the skill sets necessary for you to be prepared for that particular skill set. What you're gonna see is an engaged community, a community that's willing to share a little bit of themselves, a community that's willing to make the world a better place. The one of the largest organizations on campus is Leonard Comics Society, which is the umbrella organization for all the community service works Tufts University engages in, everything from fund, fund, fund drives, food drives, to uh, more exotic things like Engineering Without Borders. We have an organization called CORS, which is a committee on refugees from El Salvador that teaches English uh, language uh, attainment as well as uh, tutoring their children to succeed at both the under, at the both at the elementary level as well as the secondary school level. This is a place that is involved in its community. It's a place that people are socially conscious and aware. We have institutes here that will help you to grow in a variety of different ways, whether it be the Institute of Global Leadership, whether it be the Tisch College Civic Life, to so become engaged in the world in some respective way. So what you're gonna see here is actively involved entrepreneurial students who are intellectually powerful, but also intellectually playful. Students who want to do a variety of different things, 
who might take a non-traditional path to their pre-professional -pre goals, where those goals may be, and who want to enjoy the journey of their own educational process in some respective way. And that's what you're gonna see here, students who are very dynamically involved in make and doing something for themselves. Uh, and one of the things is being located next to Boston, only five miles away from downtown, where better to go to college than in Boston? Nowhere in the country you're gonna get a quarter million people your age, college age students. Almost 50 different colleges call Boston home in some respective way. We're one of those institutions. You have a rich resource there. It's a city that is built for you. It's an intellectual mecca. And it's one of the few places where you can meet your friends from other institutions simply by going downtown and creating a, a time to meet. So that is one of the unique aspects you're not going to find in other distinctive areas around the country. So this is a place that wants you to be who you are, a place that wants you to share a little bit of yourselves, a place that wants you to push you forward in whatever direction you see fits, and at the same time, gain a greater perspective of the world around you in some respective way. Thank you so, so that's much. a little bit about Tufts University. Thank you so much. We're now moving on to University of New Hampshire. Hey everyone, um, my name is Evan Beals. I am an assistant director of admission at the University of New Hampshire, um, affectionately known as UNH. Um, I use he, him pronouns. So um, I jump right in quickly to um, the University of New Hampshire. I always like to start with a visual representation of our location. I think it's really important to know that we're not located really in the middle of nowhere. Um, the University of New Hampshire is the public flagship university of the state of New Hampshire. We're located in the seacoast region of our state, so about 10 minutes away from the ocean in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Um, the White Mountains of New Hampshire are just about 45 minutes away from us. So for students who enjoy hiking, skiing, and enjoying the outdoors, UNH is a, a really top-notch school um, for that. That doesn't leave out the students who are more interested in staying out of the outdoors um, and exploring the bigger cities or the more metropolitan areas. Boston is a quick 45 minute Amtrak train ride away with a stop right here on campus in Durham. Um, in my senior year uh, as a student, I had an internship twice a week down in the city of Boston. So I was able to have this really great small town New England campus feel here in Durham, New Hampshire, um, but also great access in and out of bigger cities like Boston or Portland, Maine, just to the north of us as well. Um, so location is really important and it ties in a lot of our academic programs. As you see some of the photos there, we have students doing research in the ocean. We have students up in the White Mountains of New Hampshire doing wildlife and conservation biology type research um, and students in business, marketing, English, psychology and the arts, um, exploring some different opportunities in some more metropolitan type areas. We're considered a medium sized university with about 13,000 undergraduate students. Most of those students are coming from out of state, which is something that's different for a public university like us. Most public larger land grant universities have a majority of their students coming from the state in which they, they are located. At New Hampshire, it's really important to us that we build in a population of students with different backgrounds and different mindsets from 48 different states, over 70 different countries are represented um, in our international student population. Um, so you're bound to kind of navigate your life here at UNH, getting to know different people every single corner you turn. Our academic program is also really important to us. At UNH, there's over 150 different majors and programs ranging from A to Z, anthropology and accounting to zoology programs, um, and everything in between. You see on the screen now five different college divisions. Um, so there's the College of Liberal Arts, the College of Life Science and Agriculture, the College of Health and Human Services, the College of Engineering and Physical Sciences, and our Paul College of Business and Economics. Um, many programs are pretty self-explanatory as you look at the different areas of the college divisions, um, but on our website is a really great resource to explore the specific majors, but also for those of you who might not have a totally solid idea of what you want to study when you go away to college, there's so many different opportunities here and such a wide range of different programs. We are a land, sea, and space grant status institution, also a tier one Carnegie Institute um, research university. What really sets us apart in this area 
is that while we are a research one institution, we don't necessarily have a medical or a veterinary school to help us attain that status. Our undergraduate students, much like you heard about with Brandeis University, really push that tier one status um, into fruition. Our undergraduate students in their first and second year most times are getting involved in research. You're getting your hands dirty in the field of study where you wanna work. It's a really important part of our work. And you see in the pictures in the background there that our students are conducting research with NASA and building satellite structures here on campus. Um, last year, over a $108 million grant came in from NASA alone um, to work with them on a project um, to send a satellite structure up into space. Our students map the ocean floor. And for those of you in Florida, we're seeing much more frequent flooding of some of our coastal zones. Our students here at the University of New Hampshire are helping and really making a difference in that area of research. Our undergraduate research conference is one of the oldest and largest in the country with over 2000 of our students participating each year. Um, those research projects are happening in every single major and program. So even if you're interested in the humanities and you have no interest in the hard sciences um, like physics, biology, chemistry, uh, you will find a very engaging hands-on experience here at the University of New Hampshire. Student life is also really important to us. We're a very residential community. Um, so 96% of our first year students live on campus in the residence halls. Our dining options are award-winning division one athletic programs. Really, when you come here to UNH, you'll find a small town New England community that you can get involved in and you can make connections instantly. But you have large scale research school opportunity that allows any student to get involved in these hands-on programs. Just quickly with our application process, we are a school that offers early action and regular decision. Our early action program deadline is November 15th, so if we have any seniors in the room, that's coming up soon. Um, and our regular decision process is February 1st. On, a, on the application, we're on the common application or the coalition application. Um, the most important part of the process will be your transcript. We're looking for a solid B or a B plus average in your core academic classes. We know that students coming from American Heritage School are academically prepared to be here on campus and in the classroom. Where you'll find connection to your experience at American Heritage is the small class sizes, the engaging faculty members that really want you to engage in the classroom and get excited with you. Um, and so what we find is that your transcript is really important because it's pretty representative of your experience here. You'll notice that test scores are not a part of our process. We were test optional last year, so it's a normal part of our process. Um, however, if you'd like to submit your test scores, you're welcome to. I'm gonna wrap up here talking about some really strong student outcomes. 86% um, of our first year students return for their second year. Um, that's a, what's called a first year retention rate. Um, as you look at these other numbers here, looking at graduation, um, students who are employed within their field um, and taking internships, I think what's important to know is that when you're here at UNH, you're going to get the skills necessary, the motivation necessary, self-advocacy, you're gonna leave UNH with the humility, humility necessary to go out and make a difference. In the Evan, I'm so sorry to cut you off, that's so great, but we need to move on to Weber International. Thank you so much, this great information. Now we have Weber. Hi, I am going to. Hi. See it. Thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Carrie Walker and I am a Regional Admissions Counselor at Weber International University in Babson Park, Florida. This right here, what you're seeing is a live view of our campus looking out onto the lake. That is one of the very unique things that Weber has to offer is we are located on a lake in a small town called Babson Park, which is located in Central Florida. We're about an hour and a half from Tampa and an hour and a half from Orlando. So although it's small town feel, you can still go and travel to get to the bigger cities. And we're also about an hour and a half from the beach. We've been around since 1927. So we will be celebrating our 100 year birthday in a couple of years. We um, are have many degrees in business. 
That is what we started out as, as well as now we've expanded out. We have education degrees and health services majors as well. We are a private university. We have about 800 students on campus total, which allows you to have small classroom sizes as well. Our typical classroom runs about 20 to 25 students, which is very good if you're used to that format of classroom instruction. Um, it gives you the chance to really get to know your professors and build those relationships. And there's a, quite a bit more personal approach to it. We are international, so we do have students from all over the country as well. In that, there is a lot of diversity and our college campus is somewhat of a small community in and upon itself. Um, we offer um, scholarships for athletics. We are NAIA division, and we also have several clubs. We've recently added a fishing club and an EA sports club, and even though those are not NAIA division sanctioned sports, you can qualify for scholarships as well. We offer academic scholarships, also, we, you can apply on Common App or you can go to our website, www.weber.edu. We are test optional. We are not really requiring tests at this point, but if you are a Florida resident and you want to qualify for Bright Futures, we strongly recommend, recommend that you do have the test for SAT. Um, we also do campus tours, Monday through Friday and on Saturdays. If you go on our website, you can request a campus tour as well. If you have any more questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them in the chat. In the short, you guys, thanks for being on here with us. Thank you so much. Um, if you want, you guys can um, I'll put your cameras back on and the students, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat. We can address them as a whole, or if it's just for a specific college, um, you're welcome to ask for that specific college. Um, while we're waiting to see if any questions come in, I just like to ask at this point, you know, seniors are applying. If you guys could give our seniors just a piece of advice or the, the biggest, most important thing that you could kind of tell our seniors, that would be awesome. Anyone want to chime in? I can go. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so I think the best thing as a senior, what to do is to definitely go get on campus. I mean, Sanford is doing on-campus visits Monday through Saturday, and I know a lot of other schools here said that they were as well. I think that's the best way to kind of get the feel of the campus and, you know, see if you really fit there. Okay, next. I think as you kind of fill out the application, this time of year, I, I actually get a lot of emails asking, what can I do to make myself stand out? Um, I'm not gonna shame you after asking that question, but what I want you to realize is that you've already built your application over the last four years. So really what, what I want you to know is now how do you just package it up? Um, and so don't ever sell yourself short. If there's things that are like that you've been involved in in throughout high school and outside of school make sure those show up somewhere um, your best representation is your true self and you trying to like fit in somewhere might not be the best fit for you instead finding the best fit based on how how you package up yourself in that application i think is the best um, if it if you get a rejection letter you know, maybe that's the, the best thing that could have ever happened. You never would have known. It totally is okay. But it's the school that says yes to you and the package you've put together in that application that represent yourself that says, you know what, we think you're a good fit for us. Um, and so maybe that's going to be a great spot for you to land. So That's great advice. Thank you. Anyone else have any other advice on, before we move on to a question? Um, I would say to do your research to definitely go into different college campuses and make sure that it feels like home when you go there. You know, a lot of times you have an idea of this is where I want to go and get there and it doesn't necessarily, it's not a good fit. So always be open to explore different campuses and see that you're going to feel comfortable there because if you don't feel comfortable, you might not be as successful. Great. So the first question we have is for, for all the schools, what is a good number of recommendations to send and should they all be academic? 
food, anyone could chime in. Um, I think this is going to be where the research component that uh, Carrie just talked about comes in. Every school is going to have different requirements. Um, some schools are going to require two, if not three, letters of recommendation. Others may require no letters of recommendation. Um, this is this is the part where where you doing your research is going to come into play. Um, most schools will require some sort of counselor, advisor, um, administrator letter of recommendation, um, and most schools will require some sort of teacher recommendation, typically from a core subject. Um, at Brandeis, you can submit additional recommendations if you'd like, if you have a coach, a mentor, a drama teacher. Uh, for us, it doesn't matter, but think of it in terms of quality over quantity. I don't think you want to be that student that submits eight recommendations that are you know, saying the same thing over and over again which to be very clear, we have received, and I'm sure the rest of my colleagues can agree. Um, so just something to keep in mind, quality over quantity. Anyone else wanna to add to that or are we all? I mean, I can chime in there too. That, yeah, so same thing with us. I mean, for Stetson specifically, we require just one letter of recommendation, but students can send in more if they want to. Um, but with that being said, specifically with our application process, I know like some of my colleagues as well, it's a holistic review process. So of course, not only speaking to your academic abilities as a student, but also who you are as a person is really great. That's something that we're really interested in getting to know who you are, what you like, what your personality is like too. And that's one of those things that when students do reach out and say, how could I, could I stand out? How can I show you guys more about me? That's a great opportunity when you have someone that writes a letter of recommendation that really knows you and can speak both to, of course, those academic and intellectual qualities, but also your core values as a person. That's also fantastic, too. Perfect. Great. Does anyone else have anything else they want to share? Thank you so much, everyone. Ms. Schiller, do you have any questions? Yeah, what is that? What is um, some of our uh, students in some of the former um, sessions asked about housing? What's housing like on all of your campuses? Anybody can start. Um, I'll go ahead. We have those traditional residence halls, the men's dorms and the women's dorms, and then we also have apartment style dorms where you have um, four rooms to an apartment and two rooms share a bathroom. And then we also have suites in the apartment, which are private rooms with private bathrooms as well. Anybody else want to chime in? Sure. Uh, so for Tufts University, because of the pandemic, we actually took a survey of who went to return or who went to stay remote. So we we're practicing a hybrid system roughly about 88% of our students chose to return back to campus. So all our residence halls are open, plus some additional modular folks in case there is a, uh, if someone gets a positive test that so we can then have a place for them to quarantine in order to uh, separate themselves out for the safety of the rest of the campus. We actually have uh, all types of residence dorms similar to what Carrie was saying. We have, we have singles, doubles, triples, apartments, suite style housing, as freshmen that have lifestyle choices, early riser, late sleeper, neat, not so neat. Uh, so we ask them to answer those lifestyle type of questions. As sophomores, they can choose the type of living environment they choose, whether they live with other roommates they want to pick. There's also some themed houses. So we have particular uh, residence halls with particular themes attached to them or cultural attachments. So a Latino house, an African-American house, an arts house, a crafts house, a healthy living unit, and so on and so forth. And then after the junior, after their sophomore year, students will have a choice to whether or not they want to continue to live on campus or to, con or to live off campus. And that's a choice that they have as well. Roughly about 45% of our students will go study abroad during their junior year. So some of them will choose to go off campus for the semester before they go on to their subsequent study abroad experience in some way. So. A lot of head shaking, a lot of similar dorm experiences I'm seeing, right? Um, okay, well, thank you guys so much for the attendees. You'll get a quick survey when you end if you don't mind doing out the survey. For the panelists, we really appreciate your time and, um, you know, thank you. Stay safe and we can't wait. Hopefully next year we'll get to see you on campus. Everyone take care. Thank you. Thank you.